Hey guys, Beta One Studios right here with another very interesting tutorial. And today, we're gonna make some sparks. So, quite a few things for us to unwrap here. First off, we'll be using the free plugin Saber to create a laser-like energy effect. Then, we'll be using the CC Particle World effect to create and animate some welding sparks. Looks like we've got lots of new techniques and ideas to cover, so let's get started. Alright, so here we are right inside of After Effects where I've already set up a simple metal texture backdrop for our animation. Now to start ourselves off, we need a design for our laser energy effect, and it has to be in the form of a mask. For example, if I do a control Y for a new solid here, I could take the rectangle tool and draw out a quick rectangle mask and use this as my design. Or I could use the pen tool to draw out my own custom mask. The point is, your design can be anything you want. The technique I'm about to show you can be used on any design, just so long as it's a mask. Which brings me to my next point. It is actually possible to take a text layer and convert it into masks within After Effects, which is what I'll be demonstrating in this tutorial. Now I could just do a regular sans serif text font, but that would be kind of boring. Instead, I'm going to be using an awesome dingbat font called Imaginary Forces. It's available to download for free online, and with it you get a typeface full of all sorts of mythical beasts and figures. If you're interested, I'll have it linked down below. So let's see if we can create our laser welding animation using one of these symbols. Let's open up the text tool, and I think this one might be good. Now, we need to convert this text layer into a mask, so let's right click and hit Create Masks from Text. This will generate a separate solid layer with your text that's been converted into a mask, so you're free to delete the original text layer since we don't really need it anymore. Now before we go any further, let's check to make sure that this symbol only consists of one complete mask by rolling down the Masks tab in Layer. And it looks like there is, in fact, more than one mask. The second mask here is probably just the inner outline of the griffin's tail over here on the bottom right. But unfortunately, our technique will only work with one complete mask, and if there are multiple masks, you'll have to do them all separately. Looks like this green mask color is the color of our main outline, so let's get rid of the other one. Next up, it's time to apply the saber effect. As I said before, Saber is a free video copilot plugin that I strongly recommend checking out. It's free and has tons of possible applications, as you'll know if you watched my previous Saber tutorial. So I'll link both my tutorial and the Saber download page right in the description for you to peruse at your leisure. Let's go ahead and add Saber to our mask layer here. To make our background transparent, let's go to the render settings and change our composite settings to transparent. And now let's have Saber follow our mask by opening the core options and selecting our mask as the core type. You can play around with some of the basic Saber settings here until you get a look that you're satisfied with, including the glow, intensity, spread, and color. With a design as intricate as this one, make sure that your saber is fine enough so that all of the details of your design don't get washed out. It might be a good idea to set up some glow distortion to produce a nice smoky atmosphere surrounding our saber. So let's drop down our distortion options, and under glow distortion, turn up the distortion amount. Now let's animate the saber being traced onto the screen. If we go back to our customized core options, we can access the start and end offset parameters. Keyframe the end offset so that it goes from 0 to 100 in your intended time frame. 
If you want the animation to last, say, 5 seconds, then you would set your final keyframe at the 5 second mark. Alright, now that our laser energy effect is complete, it's time to move on to the main portion of our project, the welding sparks. So what we're going to do is make a new solid and apply the CC particle world effect. Now if we're only looking at native After Effects plugins, you have a couple of options when it comes to particle generators, but I personally found that in terms of sheer versatility, Particle World comes out on top thanks to its additional parameters and added Z-axis, which allows for some pretty cool depth effects. But first things first, let's set up our actual particle generator so that it produces the right look and feel for our welding sparks. To do that, we're going to need to tweak both the physics and the particle appearance until we produce our desired look. Now as you can see if I scrub through our timeline real quick, the default particle look is already relatively similar to what we want, but there's a few parameters we can change to make it look even more realistic. First, let's lower the birth rate to around 0.4. Of course, you can adjust the birth rate to whatever you like, but I personally prefer a slightly less ostentatious look when it comes to reproducing real-world effects. Let's also up the longevity of our particles to make them last just a little bit longer. Under the producer settings, we can access the depth effects that I mentioned earlier. As you can see, when I adjust the radius Z parameter, it spreads out our particles along the z-axis. This three-dimensional aspect is why I chose CC Particle World for this effect, rather than Particle Systems or Particle Playground. While we're here in the producer settings, let's also set the x and y radii to zero, just so that they don't start spreading out too much. Now let's have a look at our physics options. If we change our animation type from explosive to viscous, we can get a slightly more natural looking particle burst effect. You'll notice that as the particles are ejected from the producer, they all follow slightly irregular paths in a much more contained manner, which works out pretty well for our welding effect. If you want to change the color of your sparks, simply go up to the particle options and select starting and ending colors as desired. I would recommend choosing a very bright color as your birth color, since colors on the darker end of the spectrum tend to be a lot harder to see. Once you're satisfied with the way things are looking in your particle world, be sure to add motion blur to the layer, and then turn on motion blur in your comp for that nice realistic touch. Last thing, let's add a quick glow effect to give our sparks a bit of extra spice. And let's up the threshold a bit, just so it doesn't look too overdone. There are also some additional opacity settings that you can play around with if the sparks are looking too bright for your taste. Alright, so our particle look setup is pretty much complete. Now that that's taken care of, it's time to actually animate these sparks to follow the path of our saber. But first, we need to fix something. To animate our particle world, we're going to animate the position parameter of the entire layer. And that is a bit problematic right now. If I click and drag our particle layer, our particles are getting cut off by the edge of our layer. Don't worry though, the solution is actually super simple. Just make the layer size bigger. If we extend our layer size enough, even if it leaves the center of the comp, it'll still be large enough that the border of our layer won't be visible. So, let's select the Particle World layer, go up to our Solid Settings, and make the layer bigger to say 3840 by 2160. If that still ends up not being big enough, then we can always come back and change it again. Now, no matter how much I drag the layer's position around, our sparks aren't going to be cut off. So, how are we going to make this entire layer follow our saber? One way we could go about doing it is to keyframe everything entirely by hand, frame by frame. This would provide you with a lot more flexibility as to how you want to animate your sparks. For instance, if you wanted to give it a slightly wobbly path to make the sparks look more organic. But the obvious downside, of course, is that frame by frame animation is painstaking. It takes tons of time, and if your mask is anything more complicated than a primitive polygon, 
then, well, good luck with that. Instead, what we're gonna do is take our entire mask and convert each and every point into a position keyframe. To do that, let's go over to our saber layer that has our mask and have a look at the mask path parameter. Select it and press Control C to copy it. After Effects has now stored the entire shape of the mask and converted it into positional data. Now let's select our particle world, press P to open up position, select it, and press Ctrl V to paste. This might take a while because it's currently copying over the positional data in the form of hundreds and hundreds of keyframes. Once it's done copying, we need to make sure that our new position keyframes match up with the tracing animation that we did on our saber earlier. Otherwise, the sparks won't follow our energy laser as it's being traced onto the screen. Go ahead and select all of the keyframes that After Effects just created. To stretch them out with equal spacing, all you have to do is hold down the Alt key, click on the last keyframe, and drag everything out. Now, both our saber and our sparks are perfectly matched up. One final thing, you'll notice that our particle world is still generating sparks even after our saber is finished. So let's fix that. Let's scrub to just a little bit before the end of the animation and set a birth rate keyframe. Then, at the concluding 5 second mark, let's set the birth rate to 0. And with that, the sparks vanish into thin air, completing our laser welding effect. Alright, so that's about all I've got. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial as much as I enjoyed making it, and I will catch you guys next time.